What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic CM. It's episode number 104 and look at our fixtures for December. Starts today's episode off as you can see five games all coming today. Sevilla away, Leverkusen away in match day six of the Champions League group stage. Almeria at home and then Getafe and Ibar both away from for our international break as that will see us complete, or almost complete the first half of the season in La Liga. 18 games and 19 in the first half. So heading to the winter break right now as we know top of the tree. But it's been a more competitive season than last year you know last year we got a big point separation around this time in December and once that happened we just never looked back and we were never caught up but this season only a few points clear at the top long way to go and whilst we are still the front runners and of course the holders and the favorites lots of the season still remaining not at a halfway point just yet. For our first game though, it was indeed severe away from home and they are a fantastic team to do a career mode with as well. Real stadium in the game, of course, really nice kits as well. Beautiful city, Seville too, but also uh, Seville, one of the reasons why I really recommend them as a, uh, a CM team is because they are the most successful Europa League team of all time. No one's won the Europa League more than Sevilla. Six Europa League slash UEFA Cups, I believe. And I think also, I might be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure they've won every single final they've gone into. I think they're 6-0, and like Jordan, you know, in the Europa League final. Uh, so definitely, definitely a team worth doing a, a CM with. They've got some decent young talent, of course. Uh, Jules Kunje, they've got him. Um, just a, a really uh, awesome uh, side, but also one that needs to uh, to be rebuilt as well. Uh, if you do want a challenge for the Liga titles uh, and try and top of the El Clasico and Atletico Madrid dominance as well. They're, they're a great side for a CM, man. I definitely do recommend them. Anyway, oh, we took the lead in the first half and Sufati getting yet another goal to make it 1-0 then in the second half after a first half would really dominate and my finishing just wasn't there and it seemed to remain the way in the second half Cucurella denied by Sergio Asensio is still 1-0 from that, though, we see Frankie de Jong go down, but play advantage. Fatty into Cucurella, straight into the path of Leandro. Nice little roll off to Fatty, and there is a second of the game as well. Fatty's goal to game ratio this season, not quite the same as our last campaign with our number 17. And I don't know whether it's because I'm sort of playing through Leandro a little bit more this season, as thankfully de Jong's injury in the passage to the build-up of the goal there was just a bruised shoulder and a five-day injury, so not a noteworthy one. I don't know if it's because I'm sort of like trying to get Leandro more involved in his debut year of us. He and Leandro have around the same amount of goals. I think Fatty's got two more right now uh, than our new French centre forward. But yeah, you know, with, with Keane and Dembele, I, I kind of made like Fatty the focal point of the front three. Then it would be Keane, then Dembele was always the third man option. But in this season, I've, I've sort of tried to split Leandro and Fatty both as sort of like number one sources of goals or trying to make it out that way um, if I can. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I need to go back to last season, maybe we'll have more success that way, you know, making Fatty the focal point and the star. I've just, again, because Leandro came in and I've been looking for like a star youth player for so long in this series, maybe I've been trying to prioritise Leandro, getting more goals and more assists than I should, seeing as Fatty is still the star of this team, certainly was last season anyway. But uh, for the second game of today's episode, this was the match day six in the Champions League group stage by Leverkusen away. Now, this was a really interesting one at the Bayer Arena in Germany. Heading into the game, as we knew avoid defeat and that would guarantee top spot but I felt as though because of the head-to-head -head record we beat by Leverkusen 2-1 at the new Camp I felt as though Leverkusen would need to score two or more goals in order to top the group and finish as winners but instead, after losing the game by a goal to nil, probably deserved to lose the game, but I think the 1-0 scoreline was the right scoreline, I noticed that we dropped a second, and I couldn't work this out, and, and someone's going to need to tell me why this is, because we had a better head-to-head -head record than Bayer Leverkusen if you go off goals scored after goal difference. So, of course, we had the goal difference in the head-to-head -head between Bayer Leverkusen and us is the exact same. We both scored two, and we both let in two. No, sorry, we both, um, we both scored two, we both let in one. So in the first uh, leg, uh, first first fixture, I should say, we won 2-1. And then in the second uh, fixture, by Leverkusen won 1-0. One, one, so yeah, effectively, we both scored two and uh, we both let in two. So, you know, obviously the, the, the goal difference in the head-to-head -head record was the exact same. So our head-to-head -head record was the same. The goal difference in the head-to-head -head record was the same. But surely after that, it goes goal scored, right? Doesn't it go goal scored after the goal difference? Uh, sorry, the head-to-head -head and then the goal difference in the head-to-head. -head. Doesn't it go goal scored afterwards? So I couldn't really work it out because, you know, we had a better goal difference record than Bayer Leverkusen. We had a better record against Celtic and Ajax, the other two teams, than Bayer Leverkusen did against those two teams. So I couldn't work out why we dropped to third. I mean, unless it's actually not goals scored, but instead goals conceded, because 
I mean, I don't know, because obviously Bayer Leverkusen kept a clean sheet in the second fixture. I'm not really sure, so I must have done the calculation wrong, or I'm not entirely sure. Maybe the rules have changed, I don't know, but I, I, I was pretty sure that after, again, the head-to-head, -head, if you're neck and neck, then it goes head-to-head, -head, or I thought it was head-to-head -head against the other teams, which would have put us first. But if it's not, then it would be head-to-head -head goal difference, which, again, would be even, because we, again, had the exact same. You know, we both scored two and we both fled into... And then, again, if, it, if it's not that, and it goes down again, I would have thought it would have been the goal scored. But it wasn't, because we scored more than Leverkusen, yet yeah, I, I, I really, I honestly, I really, I couldn't work it out. So I was very confused. I'm not entirely sure why we dropped a second. I'll blame myself for not being up to date with the rules nowadays, but um, even so, that really confused me. So, in the end, losing on the final group game by a goal to nil, I didn't think it was going to matter. But instead, we dropped a second in the group. And it can't even be alphabetical order, because it's, it's B and then F, whichever one you want, FC Barcelona or Barcelona, before L. So I really, I was absolutely stunned I could not work that out whatsoever someone's gonna have to let me know in the comment section down below while we dropped to second place there but uh, regardless uh, in the following game back to winning ways in La Liga back in the new camp 2-1 over Almeria uh, once again you saw the goal scorers there Leandro and Antti Fati both getting one each also Leandro scored two on his debut and then a few games without a goal but now he's starting to pick up the slack I, I feel right now as they're both neck and neck in terms of like the, the race for the golden boot this season. Obviously, you know, poor Dembele is always going to be a third man option here. But again, I'm, I'm still really not sure whether I should be prioritising Ansu Fati more in terms of getting him or making him the focal point of our offence. But at the moment, it's working out okay. Fati and Leander are sort of splitting the amount of chances they get between one another. But in the first half, it was Leander heading over as it was still 0-0 in this game against Katafi, penultimate one of December. And this was such a tough game as well. Really, really difficult. I just could not break down the hosts in this one. We only got the two chances, really. Um, uh, in the game. First again, Leander is header over and then Frankie de Jong, 19 minutes after the restart, giving us the breakthrough. But this was, like I said, such a difficult game. And I mentioned it at the start of the episode, it's been a much more competitive season this year and a lot more difficult. And in a weird way, I, I know it does sound kind of weird, but I'm kind of pleased about it. I'm kind of pleased it's been a bit more of a challenge for me this season. You know, not just to stay top as we currently are right now and avoid the chasing pack, but also in these sort of games, which, you know, normally you'd think would probably be bankers. They're like grind out victories. We won the game by two goals to so nil. No, we were the better team, don't get me wrong, but it was really tough to break them down. Once we got the first goal, then I felt as though we were able to open up a little bit, a little bit easier. But yeah, I definitely feel as though this season's been a little bit more difficult, and I'm, I'm enjoying the challenge. You know, I really am. You know, we might still be top, but it's it's nowhere near as uh, as clear cut as it was last season, where we were looking like the far best team in the country, and no one's going to catch us this season. There's a few in the chasing pack that could still make up the ground between now and the end of this season. So for the final game. Of of today's episode uh, this would be again the final game before uh, the winter break 18 games so one game before the halfway point Ibar away from home took lead early through the lit scoring well what we know is his second goal of the season the game only registered as his third goal, uh, first goal of the season because the one against Real Madrid was for some bizarre reason chalked off him but that all counts as his official uh, first goal is coming in from Juve uh, in the summer he made it 1-0 and in 28 minutes in oh I'm telling you guys I know I know I know I know it, it sounds really obvious, but this is the importance of having like a star goalkeeper in your team that's like in the high 80s or 90 overall plus. To a stay with amazing one-on-one -on -one save there. And you know, goalkeepers in FIFA don't often save one-on-ones. But I often find that unless they're like really highly rated, they'll practically never save them. But when you do have like a star goalkeeper, like with the Gunners, we have Jan Oblak, and then in this team it's Ter Stegen. What a stop that was to keep it at 1-0. And then minutes afterwards, Leandro made it 2-0. That's the importance of having an amazing goalkeeper between the sticks. Because when you're breached, when your back line is breached, like mine often at times is, you want to have a chance. Do you know what I mean? If you've got a goalkeeper that's like 79, 80 overall, you know every single time that ball is fine in the back of the net and there's nothing you can do about it. If you've got a really highly rated goalkeeper, there's a chance. And okay, maybe the chance is like 10, 15% because one-on-ones are practically always converted, but at least there's a chance. A goalkeeper, that, again, is like in the mid-70s, high-70s. He's never going to save the one-on-one, -on -one, man. It's like, what, once in a blue moon, if that? So, yeah, that's the importance of, again, having a star goalkeeper in your team to bail you out when your back line is breached. But so we made a 3-0 in the second half, and then after Pedri went down, once again, we played a Vige to get ourselves a fourth goal, Ansu Fati with another 14 for the season out as he, Leandro, 
and Pedro Porro uh, bad goals in the second half. So yeah, uh, sorry, uh, Leandro's right towards the end of the first half. But big win there. One game to go for the halfway point. Winter break is here and now with five points. Group top of the table. But again, again, it's a lot tighter than last season. Unlike last year, we were just ran away with it. I don't see that happening this season. Whilst I love the points record, just staying top is going to be a challenge on its own. But that won't this episode of the Real CM guys. A big fan. Fortunate you have enjoyed it. And if you have, then please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you for the next episode of the Real CM when the January transfer window will open very soon.